A few weeks ago, I made a video testing out one of the biggest AI art generation tools, Stable Diffusion, and even trained a model with my own face using Google's Dream Booth tool. In this video though, I want to talk a bit more about the, the consequences of using tools like that. AI technology in general is advancing rapidly, and there are many different ways that it can be used to enhance or replace human labor. In this video, I'll discuss the, the pros and cons of using AI tools in this way, as well as the ethical considerations that come into play when using these tools. The use of AI like Stable Diffusion in the field of professional arts can be both dangerous and beneficial. On one hand, AI tools like Stable Diffusion can provide artists with the ability to create new and unique works of art quickly and easily. This can be especially useful for artists who are under tight deadlines or who are looking for new ways to push the boundaries of their art. However, the use of AI tools like Stable Diffusion can also be dangerous for professional artists. One of the biggest dangers is the potential for these tools to be used to create counterfeit art, with the ability to quickly and easily generate new works of art, it may become easier for unscrupulous individuals to create fake art and pass it off as the real thing. This could damage the reputation and the livelihoods of professional artists who rely on the authenticity of their work to maintain their careers. Additionally, the use of AI tools like Stable Diffusion could lead to a decrease in the value of art. If AI-generated art becomes more widespread, it could devalue the work of human artists and make it more difficult for them to sell their work at a premium price. This can make it harder for artists to make a living from their work and could ultimately discourage people from pursuing careers in art. Artists could potentially take advantage of the trend of using AI tools like Stable Diffusion by creating their own models based on their arts and selling or licensing them as a way of generating additional revenue. This could be a unique and innovative way for artists to monetize their work and could help them reach new audiences and, and gain exposure for their art. For example, an artist could create a model based on their own unique style of, say, painting, and then sell or license that model to other artists or individuals who are interested in creating arts in that style. The artist could also use their model to generate new works of art themselves, which they could then sell or license to others. This could provide a new source of income for the artist and could help them to well, expand their artistic practice and reach new audiences. Of course, there may be challenges and obstacles that artists would need to overcome in order to successfully create and sell their own AI models. For example, they would need to have a pretty strong understanding of AI technology and how it works in order to create a model that is effective and useful. They would also need to consider any legal or ethical issues that might arise from selling or licensing their models, and would need to take steps to protect their intellectual property uh, and ensure that their models are not being used in ways that could harm their reputation or career. As for text generation AIs, they can be used for a variety of different purposes, many of which can provide significant benefits and positive outcomes. Some potential use cases for text generation AI could include automated content generation, so uh, text generation AI could be used to pretty quickly and easily generate large volumes of written content, such as articles, blog posts, and social media posts, and marketing copy. This could save time and effort for businesses and organizations, and could allow them to produce more content in less time. There's also content personalization. A text generation AI could be used to create personalized content for individual users. 
For example, a text generation AI could be used to generate emails or social media posts that are tailored to the specific interests and preferences of each user, making content more relevant and engaging. Or it could be used for language translation, where a text generation AI could be used to automatically translate written content from one language to another, making it easier for businesses and organizations to communicate with customers and clients who speak different languages. The use of a text generation AI could potentially be destructive to a number of different job roles though. Some of the job roles that might be most at risk uh, being sort of well made redundant by this type of tool would include writers, journalists, and other creative professionals who create written content as part of their job. In addition to that group, you might also find that uh, people like editors, proofreaders, and copywriters could also be at risk of being made redundant, as those professionals would need to adapt to the use of the, this technology in order to remain competitive in their field or find other ways to use their skills and expertise in the workplace. There are also coding AI tools like GitHub's Copilot, the use of which in the field of professional software development could have both pros and cons. One, on the one hand, you have a coding AI like GitHub Copilot, which could provide some pretty decent benefits, uh, like increased productivity. Uh, coding AI like GitHub Copilot could help professional developers to write and debug code more quickly and efficiently. This could save time and effort and could allow developers to complete projects in less time. You might also find improved accuracy. A coding AI like GitHub Copilot could help developers to avoid mistakes and ensure that their code is correct and error free. This could also improve the quality and reliability of the software that developers create and could reduce the need for debugging and other forms of code maintenance. You could also have enhanced collaboration. A coding AI like GitHub Copilot could facilitate collaboration among developers by providing real-time assistance and suggestions during the coding process. This could make it easier for developers to work together and share ideas and could improve their overall effectiveness as part of the development team. However, the use of a coding AI like GitHub Copilot could also have some potential drawbacks and limitations, including the loss of human creativity. A coding AI like GitHub Copilot could potentially limit the creativity and originality of human developers. By providing predetermined solutions and suggestions, a coding AI could potentially stifle the ability of developers to think outside the box and come up with novel and innovative solutions. There is also the potential for errors. While a coding AI like GitHub Copilot could help reduce the number of errors in code, it's not foolproof and could still make mistakes. This could lead to bugs and other issues in the software that developers create, which could be time consuming and costly to fix. There's also the arguably further dependence on technology. The use of a coding AI like GitHub Copilot could create a dependency on technology for professional developers. If the AI were to malfunction or become unavailable, developers could be unable to complete their work, which would have rather negative consequences for their projects and potentially careers. Overall, the use of a coding AI like GitHub Copilot could provide benefits such as increased productivity and improved accuracy, but it could also have potential drawbacks and limitations that need to be considered. It's difficult to predict the exact level of risk that developers face from AI tools like GitHub Copilot, making their jobs redundant. While it is certainly possible that these tools could disrupt the job market for developers, it's important to note that AI technology is still in its very early stages and is not yet advanced enough to completely replace human developers. In the short term, it is likely that AI tools like GitHub Copilot will simply augment the work of human developers, providing assistance and support to help them complete their tasks more efficiently and effectively. However, as AI technology continues to evolve and improve, it is possible that these tools could become more advanced and could potentially begin to replace human developers in some cases.
Okay, if I'm being honest, um, everything you've just heard me say was generated by ChatGPT. I have edited a few bits, like removing the endless overall statements it gave me, but almost everything that you heard was generated. You might have noticed it repeated a few uh, things quite a lot. Uh, its phrase it, phrasing was, was a little weird, and there was definitely some parts that I had to remove because they were just outright wrong and I couldn't include them in the video. But I wanted to see how true the, its points are on, well, replacing jobs are. The short answer is that, at least for now, you are completely safe. Unlike Stable Diffusion, where you can get very different results from the same prompt, for ChatGPT it seems to basically have one answer for a given prompt or question. When I asked it about the pros and cons of using Stable Diffusion, it gave me the exact same points as when I asked it for the ethical considerations of using it instead. It's definitely clever, but it's nowhere near production ready. The output it gives you will still definitely have to be edited by a human, and it feels a lot more like uh, a prompt than a, a final draft result. It even almost always repeats the main key phrase or prompt, like a coding AI like GitHub Copilot, or that sort of thing, in almost every different uh, separate paragraph, which makes for um, less than ideal reading. I think it makes great reading for a search engine, for SEO, which is probably the main use for this. A lot of different companies and websites basically have blogs that are filled with not really that useful information, but they have to keep posting to keep the last updated tag on the site updating and have new gener uh, new content for Google to, to index and to you know push their rankings up. And so a tool like ChatGPT, where you can basically give it a relatively short prompt and it can give you a full article worth of you know text to just paste on your website, that is fine, but it's also a job that I can guarantee you no one actually wants to do, and so that's not too big a deal. As for the art side of things though, that's a bit more of a pressing matter. There is quite a lot there to consider, including what counts as influence and what counts as just outright copy. I think the problem here is the scale and specificity. When an artist learns to draw, paint, or whatever you know, method they use, they learn from other artists. They learn from existing works, often directly copying the styles to be able to learn them. But then they use that knowledge to create something unique. Technically speaking, Stable Diffusion is doing that too. But I think the discomfort comes from the scale at which it does that, and then more importantly, how specifically it can recreate that style. If you ask it for something in the style of Vincent van Gogh, well, you get a van Gogh painting. That applies pretty much to any artist you can think of. The ability to directly use someone else's style so easily is what's so worrying. I'd argue though that the art, or art in general, is more than just the piece itself. It's the story, the creativity of the artist, and even sometimes just the artist's notoriety themselves. For commercial art, I can see tools like Stable Diffusion being a fairly imminent threat. But for the sort of art that you would find in a gallery, I'm not so sure about that one. And on the coding side of things, as much as the programmer's humor uh, subreddit might think it, ChatGPT isn't going to be replacing developers anytime soon. The point it made earlier about AI being able to make bug-free code is hilarious to anyone who's actually tried to code themselves, especially since it has no idea what it's actually doing. It's just pulling from a training library of human written code, which I'm sorry to tell you is chock full of bugs. Every language is human written and therefore is not bug free, nor are the operating systems or even the CPUs that the programs run on. As for GitHub Copilot, as the name suggests, it's positioning itself as a next level IntelliSense tool, meaning it's there to make your life as a developer easier, not outright replace you. 
The idea is that instead of writing all of the boilerplate stuff for, say, an Express API, you tell it what you want and it will generate the endpoints and stuff for you. It will make, you know, CRUD jobs easier for sure, but that doesn't mean that it's going to write some, you know, dank query or black magic to process some complex data set for you, and it sure isn't going to write a, a stylish front end either. It can't debug code or troubleshoot an as yet unsolved problem. On the whole, I would say that AI tools are still very much tools in the way that Content Aware Fill in Photoshop is a tool that can be used to accelerate your work rather than outright replace you. In 10, 20, 50 years, yeah, I can see AI tools doing a majority of programming roles, of writing and I'm sure plenty more, but that's far enough away that I'm not sure I'm worried. I would say there's probably bigger fish right now. With that said, those are mine and I suppose ChatGPT's thoughts as well, um, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the uh, sort of ethical considerations surrounding using tools like Stable Diffusion, like ChatGPT, and even things like GitHub Copilot and the myriad of other options that are available for pretty much anything you can think of right now. I definitely love to hear your thoughts. Is, you know, Stable Diffusion um, something that, that concerns you? Obviously, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, concerned stakeholders, I would say, in this, uh, you know, uh, space that we're at. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely love to hear your thoughts down there. If you want to see more videos like this one, or probably not quite like this one, but more tech videos in general, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you want to uh, check out this video on Stable Diffusion, I'll leave that on the end cards. And that's kind of it. Um, this is the last video before Christmas, so if you're watching it when it goes up, Merry Christmas. If you're watching it after, Happy New Year, or whenever you end up watching this. Hello. Um, I'll be taking next week off and then I'll be back at the start of January. So I will see you then. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed us. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you all soon.